my soft opening what seriously Ooh. well you know someone else texted in one time they're like uh what's soccer japan i'm like <laughs> what the heck? Good stuff. Soko, japan i really don't know i'm looking i'm messing with camera angles right now let's do this hi guys today we're going to talk about <laughs> back pain sounds exciting yes it is well no getting rid of back pain wow that was abrupt is uh pretty fierce to be honest with you and we've all had it um, I have muscular pain as opposed to skeletal or, you know, bone pain. All that other type of pain. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of jumble it all up. <laughs> Wait, can we mash it all together? Pain. Oh, yeah. I actually did an interview today. This is pro, pre-show so scramble amble. Uh, ramble. <laughs> scramble, Campbell, ramble. A little rambling. Yeah, but uh, pre-show. No, I did an interview today with a doctor about uh, back pain. Good. Amazing. Yeah. And and it was it was really cool because the four things that I was told was um wait, wait, um, hold on. Um, Here it's coming. Hold wait, off, wait, 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 sleep. Uh, you need to get sleep. Um, you need to not have stress in your life. You need to hydrate and you need to get proper nutrition. And lose oh. weight. He did not say that. Was he fat? I don't know. I, it's all, <laughs> everything's been on the phone for the last two years. Really? You know, all these interviews. Wusses. Yeah, we're all like, I'm well, what's scared. What's the voice's background? Uh, you know, I could pull it all up, but my phone, I think I left my phone in the other room. So talk amongst yourself. Nice. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, Interview she's technique trusting number us. one walk off the set. Oh. You know, leave it to the folks that are being interviewed to do the interview. Now, Lizzie, yes, how sir. long have you felt that way? Well, I don't know if I'm Why allowed to say that. In my house? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I was just readjusting the bathroom camera. <laughs> remotely. Uh, good stuff. Hey, oh, one, hey, look. That's the one Linda doesn't know about. Yeesh. Uh-oh. Almost time to come back. I wonder if I still have it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And yes, these tunes are paid for and licensed. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. That one's not. Right. No. Yeah, yeah. Live from the Connections Studio Suites, it's Connections. Connections. Connections is relationship radio. Well, hi de ho everybody. I didn't call you a ho, Lizzie. I swear, it was Ooh, not my intention. I almost answered anyway. Yeah, no, you did. You no, like, it's just reflex. The... Exactly. <laughs> She's like, who are you calling a not ho? Ears. Yeah, all right. It's time for connections, my friends. I am Melissa Fox. That was hashtag Lizzie said what? And Dr. David Klein chiming in from the cheap seats as always. Um, it's time for connection show. David Klein is our doctor extraordinaire. Um, a bunch of pain uh, certifications and stuff, board certifications. It's three of them. Three of them. Gotcha. Okay. And tonight we're going to talk about that strange, elusive back pain. Yeah. Mm, Gone. Yeah. Bring it down. Got to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, just, just as a matter of, of point, information, background, a little bit of extra color. Mm. You know, there are a couple, three things, two or three things that bring people to see doctors' attention. One. Bleeding. Well, that works for men and women. Men less so than women. And pain. Okay, mm. those are the two big ones. Recently, it's lack of performance in bed. That brings another bunch in. But for the most part, it's pain. So what's you know what percentage of adults in the United States? We'll concern ourselves with this country. We'll worry about the others uh, when they buy us at auction next year. Yeah, right. So what percentage of American adults would you guess, suffer from chronic pain? And the answer is about 8%, 8 to 9%. This works out to a lot of people. It's about 20 million people in total hmm. will suffer from chronic pain. And the backache next to headache would be the, the leading complaint. So what is it? What Really, what's it all about? Well, you know, it could be due to bone issues. It's very common. You break a bone, you snap a bone, you develop arthritis. That's a bony issue. 
It could be a bursitis. Far more common than you'd ever believe with regards to backache. Huh. It gets missed. Why? Because you really can't see it so well on an MRI. Burst, right? wait, wait, bursitis. Wait, wait, wait. What is bursitis? That sounds like some made up stuff my no, grandmother no. used the to bursts say. Is in bursts is a places. lubricating sac. No, you have bursa all over the, the body. Hmm. And so, lubricating sacs, you know, you'll have these things Excuse between me, what? bone and skin. You'll have them between muscle and muscle, muscle yeah, and skin. I, I heard it too. What's that? Lubricating sacs. Lubricating sacs, yeah. I mean, it's what it is. I mean, they're not, not everything. It has to do with bursitis. Not everything is sexual. No. Just, not just so at you all. know. And so. Yeah, and bursitis will cause midline back pain. It can mimic all kinds of things. It's very interesting, very easy to fix once you make the diagnosis. It's not a radiological diagnosis. It's a physical examination diagnosis. And you'll have problems with nerve, muscle, and sometimes even things like kidney will cause back pain. You can develop back pain from knee issues. You can develop back pain from problems going on in your feet. It's very interesting how the back can, uh, can hurt. You'll experience pain in the back, it may not have anything to do with the back at all. So let's say you have something like hepatitis with a subphrenic abscess. You will have backache. You're going to go, uh, what does that mean? Mm. It means individuals that have certain types of abdominal problems can experience backache. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. You know, that's the kind of thing that people die from. Rather Ooh. suddenly you bleed out into your belly. Oh. This particularly big thump in gizzard, sometimes known as the aorta, mm. sits in the ret what's called the retroperitoneum. It sits up near the spine and will cause backache. People that have colitis will experience backache. Individuals that have kidney stones will have backache. If you have cystitis, you'll have backache. So to simply say that backache is one of the leading causes of lost time at work would be an understatement because yeah. it's not just um, you know the, these disc issues and, and arthritis. It's just not for breakfast anymore. There are whole <laughs> bunches of things that can cause backache. Where do you go to figure out what's going on? Right, and that is, in fact, the biggest problem at all. Sure. Once you know what you've got, it's actually very, very easy. So I had a gal in today who I've known for many years, and she's been a loyal patient forever, and I've treated her for bunches of things, hormonal issues, urinary tract infections, uh, bronchitis, all kinds of stuff. Over the years, people do get sick. They end up at the doctor's office, and you treat them. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know, maybe six or seven months ago, she had a problem with her lower back. And so she went into the orthopedic surgeons. They told her that it wasn't anything that they could identify. God bless them for not attributing arthritis and, and taking her to the operating room. But she still had this terrible pain. It was keeping her up at night. She couldn't uh, rest on her right side. Uh, it was making her feet go numb. So she was going every which way but loose. What her problem was is something called trochanteric bursitis. And it's a bursitis just under the skin between the, the, the uh, muscle called the vastus lateralis and a bone called the greater trochanter. And so when you lie on that side, it hurts like the dickens. Well, guess what? Okay, when you go to sleep at night, you're going to have three or four choices of places to sleep. If you're a, a, a woman, okay, that's that's not, let's just say, basically with, without um, uh, <laughs> breast tissue, okay, you can't sleep very comfortably on your stomach for How's very long. Uh, right? Yeah, you can well, spread Lizzie, them apart. you know exactly what you I'm talking about. You can spread them apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, well, you I'm can. A, I'm a belly sleeper. Well, you know, Lizzie, you know, you're, <laughs> you know, once they get to a certain size, it gets easier to do that. But let's assume, let's assume that people, they're fake. not everybody's that way. Oh, if they're fake it's oh forget worse. it that's this so lady, uncomfortable yeah she didn't do that but in any event so you know we popped a needle in, into that burst so put a little bit of local anesthetic and some steroid and it went away but the sh but the joke was was that she you know did all right with it six months later she ended up going back to the orthopedic surgeon they ended up sending her to somebody else they they put a needle in her back they did this they did that wow. they did mris they spent a lot of money a lot of time mm. and it turned out to be the same trochanteric bursitis all over again so common things are common but you need to understand that not everything originates from where you you experience the pain mm -hmm. and not all pain problems are originate from where you think they should originate because they don't really care. Nobody really cares what you think. Right. Things are what they are. So what's one of the most common causes of backache? You know, so if you had to have a problem, okay, what's number one? Number one is probably going to be arthritis of the back. Okay. Why does this happen? Because the American population, adult population, is two-thirds 
overweight. Fat. Only two thirds. thirds. Two thirds are overweight. Half of those are more. I think, I, think, I think that's Lies. being real nice. I think well, you're being sweet. It's about two. It's it's between. It's it's a lot. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. Sounds, okay. That's a lot better. Individuals you ever heard that are actually that fifth third bank. Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Yeah, I know just what you mean. It's kind of like jumbo that. shrimp down the street. Right. So it's an oxymoron. In any fact, there are lots there, and lots. Everyone's of, overweight. Yeah, lots of people that, that that carry too much weight. Now I want you to imagine for just a second, okay, that you're a guy. That's in this room. That's a that's that's a stretch. Okay. All okay. Right. And I gave you about thirty pounds of textbooks to carry. Oh, so you'd stick me. them in front of you. <laughs> all right. Okay. And you'd hold them with your arms. And so, in order for you to maintain your balance, that is to not fall over and hit your face, you have to arch your back backwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, those thirty pounds could easily be breast tissue, don't you think, Lizzie? Yeah, I'm telling wow. you what. I've okay. got. I've got. I'm so what happens you. now? Let's just say it gets even more interesting. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, the lower back starts getting stressed. For long periods of time, because not, I mean, most women spend a lot of their time standing, not necessarily lying on their back. And so uh, the, the, the facet joints in the lower back take a beating. They become arthritic. Oh, wow. It's a real problem. Now, let's, say, let's wait for a moment and say, what about those very same women that wear high-heeled shoes or he- shoes with any heels at all? Okay, that throws your back backwards even more. Otherwise, you end up on your face. Is there a thing called, is, the, is it for real, like sway back? Swayback is a funny kind of a thing. Okay, in horses, what happens is very much the same thing. They become osteoporotic, they carry too much weight, and they end up with what's called a spinal lordosis. And that's, now, is it, it like curve? I swear I'm swayback. Well, you might, you know, you'd almost have to be for you to walk. Okay? Okay. All right? And so I've, I have recommended reduction mammoplasty to women for less. Okay? Oh, no. And so what happens is that the back starts to arch you know, let's just say abnormally inward, and that will lead to arthritis of the lower back. Got it. So you probably already have it. Okay, so arthritis will cause backache. You know, how do you treat it? We'll get to that in a bit. What else can cause backache of a vertebrogenic, that means coming from the vertebrum or the, or the bones of the back, the disc material. It will start to degenerate, and the more uh, time that you spend looking up overhead, arching your back backwards, the more the discs take a hit, actually. It's kind of interesting. They can be crushed, by being thrown forward, and they can be stretched and torn by arching your back backwards. Interestingly, they can also be sheared by rotational forces, and this is the sort of thing that a, that a, a T-bone injury in a car will do. Oh, so okay. you'll end up damaging the what are called annular fibers of the disc. So there are people out there who go, yeah, they told me I had an annular tear. That's how you did it, it was rotational injury. And we're going to be back <laughs> momentarily He's got this thing figured after out. these important annou- announcements from uh, our most honorable sponsors. Yeah. He's talking about himself. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Connection Show is sponsored by Stages of Life Medical Institute. Check them out, stagesoflifemedicalinstitute.com. Stay right there. We're going to be talking more about back aches and pains, things you can do, things you can avoid. <laughs> Connection is Relationship Radio. Oh, is it? Hi, Rob. So here we are, the most, what do you call the, the honorable, honorable sponsor. <laughs> All right. All right. Welcome back to Connection Show. Dr. David Klein doing a pseudo introduction there. Kind of weird, but. It's kind of odd, it isn't it? Was, I'm not uh, much of an introducer. No, no, but you're a talker for sure. Hashtag, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Lizzie you. said what in the chair as well. We're talking about back aches, back pain, where it comes from, why you have it. And uh, eventually we'll get to what you can do to alleviate it or at least minimize. And that's the key. So in order for you to do that, you need to know what the possibilities are, because it's not just a matter of going out and picking a medication and sloshing it down, which, by the way, is probably done more commonly than not. So we talked about uh, the bone itself. Osteoporosis can damage the bone. Facet arthritis can damage the bone. The disc can be damaged, herniated disc, fractured disc, um, you know, these sorts of annular tears and whatnot, all of which hurt. But you know something? They're all treated differently. And then come the more interesting things. The bursa, these lubricating sacs, will exist between the bones of your back. The little nubbins that you can see when when you, or feel, when you run your fingers down somebody's spine. Bump, 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 bump. Between each one, okay, is a bursa, lubricating sac, between the supraspinous and intraspinous ligaments. So when you pull a muscle, when you tear your back, extend it, damage it, or whatever, sometimes you'll see swelling at midline, and that's actually a bursitis. Muscular pain can cause backache. The iliopsoas goes from the lumbar area down into the femur, and it will cause backache. 
interesting problem. The chiropractors love this one because they can treat it in about three minutes. You know, it takes them longer to, to bill you than it does actually to, to fix it. And it's marvelous. Okay, chiropractors, marvelous people when they're not trying to, to sell you machinery. And so what other sorts of things do we want to look at? Muscles. What other muscles can cause backache? And I'm going to give you a little tip here. Okay, and one way to, to, to give somebody backache, something that will look like a kidney infection, because it'll hurt right in the flank, That's what I was gonna ask. is a tendonitis okay. at the knee. Really? I was going to ask, because I know that a lot of, I can tell whenever I'm not hydrated enough, if my back, my lower back starts to ache. Yes. So, yeah. It, so could, be, it could be a lot of different things. You might have had a poop. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it can happen. No, sure. that's two true. times a week. But there's but, a, there, yeah. you got to work on but, that. So it could be. That's another show. It could show. be your knee. Yeah. So there's a muscle called the sartorius. Okay. The, the sartorium is Latin for tailor. And it runs from just along the medial aspect of the knee up to the anterior iliac spine. What that is, is that the hip pointer to those of you that play football. It's a place you want to hit somebody if you want to disable them temporarily. Mm. So that muscle is the one that you use to climb up stairs, but more so to cross your legs. So if you go to cross one leg over the other, you are going to isolate and use that muscle called the sartorius. If it develops tendonitis at the knee, medial mm -hmm. portion of the knee, it is almost impossible without a, a good physical diagnostician to differentiate that from having kidney infection. Oh. That is crazy. Why is that important? Well, you go to the doctor's office, you think you have a, a urinary tract infection. It turns out to be a knee inflammation that you, you would think the treatment might be different. It's very different. So those are the sorts of things we see at stages all the time. And it's actually kind of cool. Arthritis of the sacroiliac joint will cause pain in the lower back and it will cause some pain down the leg. Now, if anybody out there is told that they have sciatica, and I'm sure that there's at least one person out there going, yeah, they told me I have sciatica, therefore I have sciatica. Okay, number one, most diagnoses that make it to my office are misdiagnoses. That is the single most common diagnosis that we see. Mm -hmm. They come in and what they're told is wrong. Just because a doctor tells you something doesn't mean it's correct. Oh. Okay, it is a, it's what they call a, an educated wag. <laughs> Wild guess. It's true. Okay? And so without doing certain, uh, let's say, provocative maneuvers and or provocative tests, and sometimes it's really hard to sort these things out. So like that little deal with a knee. The way you can prove that that's the problem is by simply putting a topical anti-inflammatory in the appropriate spot. And if the back gate goes away, eureka, I found oh, wow. it. And you save that person a tremendous amount of aggravation and a good deal of money. Do you have a quick question here? Barb is uh, watching us on our cool. social media. Hi, Barb. She's had a lot of back pain lately and had lidocaine shots. What do you think of that? Lidocaine shots? Well, that sounds like a great way to waste money. So lidocaine is a short-acting anesthetic. And it's used to do what are called trigger point injections, sort of thing that the family docs do, the physiatrists do, because they think that they're doing some good for you. Yeah. In all fairness, for many, many years, I thought the same thing. I don't do trigger point injections anymore because they don't work. So the reason why you're going back and getting them over and over again is because they're treating the wrong thing. So if you have pain in the back, okay, and a muscle is going into spasm, a segmental muscle, you're looking at it and they're gonna think, they're gonna fix the pain by paralyzing temporarily that muscle with some local anesthetic, you are wrong. You have to deal with that, that uh, factor that's causing that muscle to go into spasm. Mm -hmm. It could be a nerve, very common. It could be an arthritis, could, very, very common. But it could also be the viscera that are on the other side of that muscle. So if you have pain on one side of your spine and that muscle keeps going into spasm, you have to look at what's underneath that muscle. I would be looking at the ureter. So could you possibly be having a kidney stone? The answer is affirmative. Could you possibly be having colitis if, it, if it's in that portion of the flank? The answer is yes. But what you need to do is to spend less money on trigger point injections and lidocaine. In the very least, ask this person if they wouldn't use Marcaine. Lidocaine lasts about 40 minutes at best when injected into the muscle. Marcaine lasts four hours. So if you're looking to make something give you some relief, at least get some time out of it. Because last I checked, they didn't give those procedures away. 
they charge you pretty substantially yeah for they them. do yeah, yeah even the patches uh i mean they're only a few a little bit they're topical the but lidocaine patches yeah they so don't last very long they you know? last just a handful of hours if mm -hmm. that and so why do you want to do these things so you have to figure out what the underlying issue lidocaine patches have one maybe two indications in, in my world one of which is shingles persistent pain mm -hmm. following shingles those would be the two instances that i would use a, a lidocaine patch now, sometimes we use lidocaine patches and other creative ways for erectile uh, you know, dysfunction, but that's another matter. Yeah. You can, actually. It's very interesting. Well, it worked well when I had the rib damage. Yes, because um, you broke a bone. Right. But you could have gotten away doing something a little bit more interesting, like using Voltaren gel, which would have dealt with the pain far more directly. Well, so I, instead I of did use yeah, that's That's what you do. Well, I used uh, Kinkies. The Kinkies too, yeah, is yeah, an yeah, anti-inflammatory. Yeah. That is the amazing stuff. Very, very, yeah, I developed it for horses, believe it or not. Yeah. So, yeah, my, my daughter was a rider. And so, you know, the riders don't get ribbons if the horses don't do well. Right. The horses Kink don't do well. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. The horses don't do well if the riders don't do well. So mm -hmm. it's like a win-win yeah, -win situation. Really, they have to work together. They work as a unit. So, you know, my daughter, you know, her, you know, her horse would have hock issues. To you, that would be known as a knee. The knees, the knees to a horse are actually elbows. So, but the hocks take a beating on horses. Coincidentally, mm -hmm. so do yours. So... We developed the hockeys, which is a transdermal MSM, to treat horse arthritis, and it works. It, it goes through horse hide. The same wow. product is now available. What's called hockeys for horses, good for the hocks, <clears throat> and kinkies because it gets the kinks out. I will, you know, uh, give my former wife some uh, a kudo for coming up with the name. You know, she didn't understand that the the dual or the double entendre uh, uh -huh. that would be there. Yeah. So. Yeah, kinkies because it gets the kinks out. However, we have had people use it inappropriately for other reasons because hey, they misunderstood easy. the name. <laughs> so, so there are many different ways to develop back pain depending upon the age of the patient population. So let's say that grandma, grandma is 82 years old and grandma all of a sudden develops terrible back pain mm -hmm. right between the shoulder plates. Okay, what possibly could that be? What's the most likely possibility? It'd be osteoporotic fracture. Okay, they occur most frequently at T10. So you're talking about sway back, which is where your back arches backwards. Right. Okay, increased lordosis if you're a doctor or physical therapist. But when you end up with an osteoporotic fracture, you crimp forward. Okay, and, and away you are. You're looking forward. You're looking down towards the ground because that's the way the wedge fractures are, uh, fac uh, fractures mm -hmm. occur in, yes. in the spine. Most common places that you get this is where the mobility of the spine stops and it becomes immobile. So that would be at T12 L1 and then just a little ways Which up. Which is what, right under the shoulder right blades? Under, right where the kidneys are. So it's, it's kind of under the shoulder blades, but not quite. That's, that's more like T6-7. Okay. So where else can you see it? In the lowest part of the lumbar uh, spine at L5. And then oh. S1 is where it gets fixed again. It becomes non-mobile. So you'll end up it's with compression tail. fractures there. That's where I'm so, mine. So compression fractures. So grandma comes in with a, with a, with a, a backache. Mm -hmm. And you go ahead and get an x-ray, which is the right thing to do. And you don't see it, you have to start thinking about neoplasm. Neoplasm. Okay. All right. When we come back, we'll take more questions if you got them. Kinkies is available at stagesoflifevitamins.com. That's good stuff. Yeah, I'm going to give it away for Christmas this year, honest. Uh, yeah, for the relatives. They're always complaining. I'm like, yeah, here. Oh, and it's this. also excellent for sunburns. So here in the state of Florida, we get sunburns. You mix it 50 50 with water and away what go the What is paint. wrong with you oh. people? You don't get no better show than this. This is Connections. Oh, the hair is standing up on the back of my knees. <laughs> Live from 10 to midnight. <laughs> what a fun bunch they are. I'd love to have yeah, fun. Weeknights at 10 Eastern on the Connections Radio Network at ConnectionsShow.com. True story. Welcome back to Connections Show. Thursday nights, 9 o'clock, right here on News Radio WFLA Orlando and in podcast heaven on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you find your favorite podcast. I am Melissa Fox. Hashtag Lizzie said what's in the chair over there. That's me, boy. It is. And Dr. David Klein is our resident uh, doctor in residence. Turn your head and cough. No. <laughs> I don't want to spit in your face. <laughs> you know that's the only reason. If yeah, they you, tell uh, turn your head. It's so you, you don't you cough on them. Cough in your mm. face. We thought it was something like, what's it, a line things up? Uh, no, it doesn't. We're talking about back pain tonight. And, uh, well, frankly, back pain any night is a pain. Yeah, uh, let's be honest. Yeah, so we've talked about all kinds of things. We've talked about arthritis, fracture. Uh -huh. We've talked about bursitis, tendonitis, muscular pain. What we haven't talked about 
is herniated disc, have we? Oh, no, we have not. No, so imagine that. Let's well, talk okay. About it. So somebody out there's got to think that they have an HNP, herniated nucleus oh, pulposus. Yes, they must the have time. a herniated I've disc. I've time. seen it's mine horrible. on MRI. Oh, yeah. Well, here's here's the joke. Now, Lizzie, is it hurting right now? Uh, right now, d- is it hurting? This, this absolute no, second? Not. No. no. Then it's not a okay. Disc. Then no. Then it may not be causing the pain in its entirety. Okay. So if but you. But then have, what's that bulge? Uh, what's the, that? The, 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 that bulge? Easy. Okay. Hey. hey. So here's. Hello, some... human resources. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to register a complaint. Very, very human resources. I'll have, to, I'll have to find my pictures and bring them in and show you. Yeah, well, here's. Let me tell you how this works. Okay. One third. <laughs> there you go. One third. Of all adults will have herniated discs and not know it. Oh, yep. Okay, so they're walking around the mall. They have a herniated disc, and guess what? No symptoms at all. You go ahead. You take that individual, and they pull a muscle. Ooh. Okay, they, they reach forward, lean forward, twist, turn, and then boom, the muscles, are, or they jam a joint. Okay, and what do you know? They end up getting an MRI, and they see a herniated disc. Even better is a bulging disc, which is normal, right? Okay. Okay, so... Ba-da-da-da-da-da. doesn't mean that what you have is causal for the symptoms that you're having. Okay. So when you have a when you have a herniated disc pushing on, let's say an L2-3 or L3-4 disc, and it's pushing on the nerve roots, well, it's causing terrible pain. The pain isn't going to come necessarily from the nerve roots, but it can come from the f- annular fibers. It can come from the, from the facet, ar- uh, facet arthritis. But are you hurting down your leg? Are you hurt? That's no. hurting down your leg. No. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Okay. If it doesn't go to your toes, it's not sciatica. No, Period. No. Exclamation point. No gimmies on this one. So if the pain goes to below your knee, at your knee, side part of your thigh, but doesn't go to your toes, it's not sciatica. Okay. Uh-huh. So if you're told it's sciatica, your doctor mm-hmm. is, is wrong. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there is that word. Wrong. R-O-N-G, That's right? <laughs> no. They're, 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 they're very, very wrong. So sciatica, boom, the sciatic nerve goes to the toes. So why, do, why is this an important distinction? Because if you don't get this thing right, you're going to be doing the wrong things to treat the patient. Oh. So just like a string of Christmas lights, the, the sciatic nerve comes off the lumbar area. So it's formed uh, essentially, you know, there's, there's two parts to it, the tibial and the perineal nerves. And so they travel together. They separate at the piriformis muscle in the hip. So when you damage this in the spine, you're going to end up with symptoms down both of these leg, both of these uh, nerves, and they go all the way to the feet, just like a string of Christmas lights. You have it in the plug. So if the plug were being damaged, mm-hmm. that's like the disc uh, damaging the nerve at the spine. It's going to go and hit every light in that string, not just the first three or four. And it won't leave the last two or three. It hits everyone every time. Okay? So why why is this important? Because you need to know what the heck your, your health care is all about. Mm-hmm. So if your doctor is going to rush you in and rush you out and you have 15 minutes to do a, a complicated diagnostic, and really the goal is to get you straight to radiology so they can find an operable lesion so they can pay for their kid's college semester, you need to have your welfare in mind, which is number one. Two-thirds of patients that get surgery for, for disc either get worse or stay about the same. Only one-third sees some relief, hmm. and almost nobody gets complete relief. No? Those are lousy, lousy those odds. Those are horrible odds. That is odd. okay? That's those are bad. awful odds. Those odds have remained constant for the past 40 years. So in spite of all the radiology, you know, that's the way it goes. So what is, what is it that generally leads to multiple lumbar surgeries? The first one. It's not done for the right reason. Well, we need to go in and clean it up a little bit. And then you end up with one laminectomy, one fusion, another laminectomy, another fusion. And what happens is is you get crippled by the fact that you ended up with something that can be treated just about as well by giving you bed rest for six weeks, which is the way it's done in Europe. Mm -hmm. We do more laminectomies in this country than are done the entire world combined. So wild. It's nonsense. Yeah. Okay, we have more orthopedic surgeons. That's the reason. So, (laughs) you know, if you have have an an MRI finding or CAT scan finding, you know, that is given an awful lot of weight. So you say, well, gee, you have a hernia disc at L3-4. Therefore, it has to be fixed. That's not true at all. Okay, now... How do you treat, uh, let's say, an acutely ruptured or an acutely fractured or acutely inflamed disc? And this happens a lot. Mm -hmm. You can lift something. You lift and twist. That's the worst thing you can do. And then those little fibers shear. Mm -hmm. Now, what's cool about this is that there's a very predictable 
process that happens, and it's an inflammatory cascade that takes about two to three days. So you'll get injured on Monday, and you're going to be in misery on Thursday. Wow. All right? That's the way it goes, because you're seeing inflammation and swelling within an enclosed space. And if you're smart, and if you're skillful, and you go to a, a let's, let's just say a knowledgeable doc, you hit it quickly, hit it early with something called proteolytic enzymes. Now, is this, this sounds like a really expensive proposition, these proteolytic enzymes. Some of them are. When you go ahead and you do chymopapane injections, okay, yeah, it's expensive. You know, you go ahead with a long needle, you go under fluoro, you pop it into the disc. When you inject it, you kind of hope and pray that your general anesthetic is helping you, and then it settles it down. The thing shrinks, assuming they put the needle in the right spot. Or, mm-hmm. conversely, you can take something called bromelain or Wobenzyme or something similar by mouth and get it fixed right then and there wow okay Okay, so my favorite's bromelain because it's the cheapest stuff out there it's about in our store it's about 15 bucks but how do you use it okay it doesn't come with good instructions for this so if you have an acutely injured back or if you are prone if you pardon the, the the use of the word if you are prone to get these sorts of processes you don't get them prone by the way but you are if you're prone to get them he's playing with have, the word prone yeah, yeah. i like it well prone is a good like thing it. you know yeah. you Maybe. use you use the bromelain but it must be taken on an empty stomach now how do you do that okay we eat too much as a society mm-hmm. so you do it an hour or so before your meal in, in the morning okay in the afternoon or the evening, or you do as I do. Because I have a a, a herniated disc at L5-S1. I would not get surgery. You know, I just won't do it. And there's no need to do it. But I take my bromelain on an empty stomach. But when when would you do that? I don't know. In the middle of the night when you go to urinate. Oh. Think about it. Okay. Okay? Yeah, so you take two of them, you go back to bed. And wouldn't you know, you wake up and you feel pretty good about it. Cool. Repeat that two or three times, and then that breaks the cascade up. Oh. What other anti-inflammatories can you or should you use? Now, you're going to go, well, gee, my favorite one's naproxen. My favorite one is meloxicam. My favorite one is X, Y, and Z. You know, the joke is, is there wouldn't be more than one if they didn't do different things. Exactly. There are 150 modulators. These are chemicals that modulate inflammation. And each one of these tends to hit different tissues and different chemistry differently. So your doc isn't going to just throw one at you, you know, whatever's on the sample closet. Some of them are better than others for certain things. So for, uh, for sacroiliac pain, arthritis mm-hmm. of the SI joint, very, biggest joint in the body, one of the most common places to get uh, injured and to feel bad. I, you know, it's just the way it goes. Very common. You use meloxicam. It is singly the best medication oh. for certain types of facet arthropathy and SI arthropathy. If you end up with a tendonitis in your neck, use naproxen. Why? Because it crosses the blood-brain barrier. And when, you know, because these neck problems all cause headache. So you're going to, if you, again, a medical metaphor, kill two birds with one stone, you pick your medicines properly. See, all this makes so much sense. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it really okay. does. You know, what, what other sorts of things do you think you can, you, do you think for a minute that you can treat pain with your food? Maybe. Of course you know the answer is yes. Okay, mm-hmm. otherwise I wouldn't have asked the way I asked yeah. it. And so <laughs> uh, things like fish oil are anti-inflammatory. The EPA in fish oil, icosopentaenoic acid is an anti-inflammatory, MSM. Food stuff, over-the-counter, cheap as dirt, one of the best anti-inflammatories you can get. And acetylcysteine, anti-inflammatory, marvelous stuff. You can, it goes on and on and on, and each one is valuable for different types of pain. Backache, what about things like, like uh, turmeric, curcumin? Okay, what do you think that does? Well, it's really healthy for you, and it tastes good too. <laughs> okay, so curcuminoids are helpful for certain... Uh, Infl- types of inflammation that involve tumor necrotic factor alpha or TNFA. So TNFA is something that you'll see um, in many different types of inflammatory processes, but in the spine, it's very, very common. So when you go after somebody with pain in the back, hip, knees, neck, shoulders, it's almost always a matter of what we call polypharmacy, and that is not a kid that was in your high school class. Oh, I liked her. She was nice. Polypharmacy. <laughs> Polypharmacy. She said next to Candy Cane. There you go. (laughs) Good kids, really. I knew Polly. Hey, Ed, hang on a sec. We got uh, Ed online who uh, took a fall, has major disc issues anyway. So we're gonna we're gonna deal with that. Don't put him on prednisone. He says. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. We'll be right back. This is Connection Show. Anything you want to find out, go to StagesOfLifeMedicalInstitute.com for more information. Stand by. It's Connections. 
Live from 10 to midnight on 1490 WWPR Tampa Bay. <laughs> Wrong. Well, you are a god. A god of a special universe where no one thinks of consequences and where those of us constrained by intelligence and common sense are not allowed. Is that my wife? There's no business like show business like no business I know. Oh, sing it, Tom. Everything about it is a pain. Wow. Yeah, that's it. We're the stars of stage. Wax of video. It's hysterical. How are you? Welcome at Connection Show. We got some stuff here from Ed. Ed, uh, Ed says, major disc issues took a fall on Sunday and really irritated them. This is Connection Show. Tonight we're talking about back pain. So it kind of all makes sense, Ed, that you would ask about your back. Two, two yeah. days later. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what's going to happen? So if, in fact, it's coming from the disc, Okay, this is the sort of this is the sort of patient that you would go after with things like bromelain. Bromelain is a is a marvelous medication, easily obtained. You go to the hippie store, the 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 the, 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 store. the uh, uh, herb store, stages of life. We all have it. Bromelain is marvelous. Have multiple uses. It's something that should be in your medicine cabinet. There's a more expensive one called uh, Wobenzyme, which people have used for years for vascular issues, but it works every bit as well for the spine. It just costs about five times more. So. What you do is you go ahead and you take this before you go to bed at night. You wake up to pee, which you're, if you're a guy, you, odds are you will, and you take two more. When you wake up in the morning, you'll feel better. Way, way cool stuff. Now, what do you do about chronic uh, facet arthritis? What do you do about chronic disc bulging? What do you do about chronic tendonitis in the back? Because that's the sort of thing that's going to happen, especially if you're physically active. Right. And it might actually be even more true if you're not physically active because your muscles tend to weaken a little bit. So... For those individuals, now I haven't said anything about opiates or narcotics. Thank goodness. Okay, not all not all narcotics are opiates. Okay, painkillers. Mm -hmm. They may be controlled. They may not be controlled. Okay. Substances. So you go after these things using polypharmacy, multiple medications hitting different parts of the inflammatory cascade, and what may be uh, factors that cause the pain get, to get worse. So let's say that you break your arm. You know the muscles around it will go into spasm. So when you treat pain that involves a, uh, a joint that's supposed to be there or a brand new one called a fracture, you go ahead and use anti-inflammatories with muscle relaxants to give relief. Mm -hmm. Different types of muscle relaxants, different talk, different day. So when you, when you damaged your neck like that, what I would do would be to go after it with something along the lines of, of a naperson. Okay. A muscle relaxant, most typically the one that I prefer is called baclofen because not only is it a muscle relaxant, but it settles the nerves down. And then I do something that drives pharmacists crazy, and that's to add an additional muscle relaxant because it works in a chemical way that's entirely different, and I prefer tizanidine. Okay. And so the combination settles things down very quickly. However, if he knows that he already has a disc issue, then the bromelain is brilliant. So okay. if he had done this on Sunday, he probably wouldn't be hurting right now. Well, he says, uh, we got a lot of information from Ed. He says, waiting on an MRI and then a snip. I'm about to reach back there and fix it myself. Lumbar fusion <laughs> 15 years ago. No trouble since then. But now the cervical is absolutely killing me. Uh, whatever it was you just said, send me some. I'll chop and snort it at this point. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Uh, I've got fish. Let's see. Um, blah, blah, blah. You got fish. Got a headache from the top of his head down my back and halfway down my left arm. So pretty much half of my body has a headache. By the way, I went to the hippie store, but for some other condition. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, well, I, you know, the, the, the headache thing is actually kind of interesting. He's using cyclo and gabapentin. Cyclobenzaprine and gabapentin. Uh, every once in a while. Yeah, well, the, 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 the trick, okay, with these sorts of things is to get consistent with it. Yeah. Now, gabapentin used to be called Neurontin, and I wrote the first article in the English literature using Neurontin to treat pain. Been doing it since the mid-1980s. Not real impressed with it. Okay, there are much better medications than gabapentin because it has something called a ceiling therapeutic effect. You can keep giving more and more of that stuff and not get any additional so benefit. So it's a tolerance level? So now once you get past about 300 milligrams, you don't get much additional benefit gotcha. from, from taking more. But there's one called pregabalin, sometimes known as Lyrica, which does not have a ceiling effect. So if you can convince your doctor to make that change, I think you're probably going to do a little bit better. Much better uh, anticonvulsant, much better pain reliever. 
Uh, the gabapentin, I don't have much use for. Now, do I have patience on gabapentin? The answer is yes. Why? Because they're already on it. Okay, and sometimes it's a whole lot easier just to leave some of these things alone and tweak the ones that you have to right. tweak. Right. So the gabapentin is also cheaper than the, the pregabalin. So there are insurance companies that won't pay that's for it. That's why. You know, so that's, that's kind of the way it is. Cyclobenzaprine is actually an antidepressant with muscle relaxant uh, properties. So you can use cyclobenzaprine if you want to knock somebody out. But hmm. if, if you have to drive during the day, it's a singularly bad idea. Don't do Your it. DUI. No heavy machine reader. Not so good. Okay. Yeah. So you have to be careful that people have to live for a living. Yeah. <laughs> I went down that road. I, you know, no, no, you know, because all the warnings when they say, don't, you know, be careful how you heavy whatever driving before, you know, and sure enough, <laughs> DUI. Well, it's a CYA. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, you're covering your butt when, you, when you're writing those things in. Do not operate machinery. With some these. of them actually. That's and you can a lose real, your license. Yeah. You know that, don't you? Or you you can be you can I'm be aware. brought down for DUI for taking a, a Benadryl. I got a DUI for, for Benadryl. And oh you no, know no, that. I, actually, I forgot it. No, that's it. <laughs> no, I forgot all about it. Yeah, I got one for Benadryl. Yeah. Damn it, asthma. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, 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 what, it's, it's the way it works, you know. But yep. yeah, it, it's they're not kidding when they say don't operate heavy machinery. Really not which messing around with your that. car. Yeah. A three thousand pound missile rolling down the street. Uh, who knew? So yeah, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So in any event, so pain is a, is a is an interesting, if not complicated, topic. The mission of the doc, the mission of the person that you're seeing in the clinic or in the in the in the hospital or in the emergency room, their mission is not. You know, something not by choice. Their mission is what it is, and that's to figure out what the diagnosis is. All right. And if they stop at the MRI and go, "Oh well, it's obvious because you have arthritis of the spine." Nothing is obvious. Not so obvious. Everybody listening has some element of arthritis. It doesn't mean it's causing any problems at all. Kinkies, kinkies. I use Good it in stuff. my hands all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, if it's yeah. a cheap, through the skin anti-inflammatory, nice. and it'll make it. It'll make it into the bursas in your back, bursae actually. It'll make it to the facet joints. I was wondering what the plural was of bursa. B u r s a e s a e yeah. bursae. Bursae. So yeah, it's like Versailles, <laughs> except it's spelled differently. Not even close. I, I mean, know. not <laughs> not John even the coffee. same ball. Well, no, but it was, it was pretty good though. Right up. It know, was right up until up. then, and then I couldn't. Yeah, yeah and no, I was you, like, could, wait. you couldn't take the lead on that one. No, it was nah, that's okay. Sorry, Dr. David Klein is available all the time for you on the internet. Just go to Stages of Life Medical Institute dot com. You can bounce off that page to uh, the radio, which is twenty four hours a day uh, of Dave talking about stuff, medical stuff. Uh, what else you got? You got Sage of Life Vitamins. We have the pop YouTube off of channel. There. We have the web. I think we have the the, the web channel at, at iHeart somewhere. It's in there. So the it's buried deeply. The podcast. Oh, they're around. So. Yeah. So suffernomore.com, Stages of Life Vitamins dot com, mm -hmm. Stage of Life Medical Institute dot com, or you can do it the old fashioned way, which is to drive over yeah. and say, "Hey, Doc." How are you doing? That's that 1911 Booth Circle. You got it. Longwood, Florida, 32750. A piano is throw off of I-4 <laughs> at 434. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to see that. I do. I want to see someone toss a piano uh, from I-4 and actually hit the stages of life building. It'd be I worth watching. I think they hit the I'd nanny's be... building first. Well, that's kind of why we tucked it behind them. You know, you know, you know, I'm one of those individuals. Hide behind the old ladies. You know? <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, Ed said thanks a lot. He's going to try and get some Lyrica, bro. Bro, yes. and happy to help you. Yeah, no problem. But new patients always accepted, and the patient portal on your website, by the way, very, very good. It's yeah. awesome. We've been, we've been, you know, we've been doing a lot of of interesting things at stages. We've been doing uh, COVID testing since January of 2020. So we've been one of the first oh, in the yeah. country that we're, were able to do it. We, we were, you guys, we were developed on the technique for the for the finger sticks in 2019. At the very yeah. end of the year, when we started seeing this popping up, you and I were on the sticks yeah. about this. You know, the first thing I did was I went to Costco and bought a pallet of toilet paper and a bunch of pens. <laughs> it People, was a good. They move. all thought I was crazy. It, no, they really did. I remember. I knew like, it was, oh, it was coming. Toilet paper. Yeah, a pallet. <laughs> yeah, crazy man. That's why you were yes. having to use. Yeah, Face it's all plots. your fault. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, again, any information that we talked about today is general knowledge and can be found on Stages of Life Medical Institute dot com. Um, Dr. Klein is also on Sunday afternoons, four to five on News Radio WFLA Orlando. Everybody, say good night. Good night. <laughs> Later, <laughs> he's knocking the place. Laughing <laughs> 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 time is over. They have it.